Corporate funding for Nova Science Now is provided by the following. Foundation funding is provided by. Along with all the problems that war brings, we're now facing a new enemy invader, emerging from Iraq. Each of its soldiers are packing weapons, dozens of them. These guys can survive for weeks at a time without food or water. We don't know how to fight them, but we've got to find out. Guns and tanks won't help us here. But as correspondent John Torres reports, what we really need is a good biologist. There's a killer on the battle-torn streets of Iraq, but it doesn't carry a gun. It's attacking injured soldiers. With better armor and advanced medical care, they're surviving in larger numbers than ever before. I was a doctor in Iraq with the Air National Guard, and I can tell you from firsthand experience, the survival rate for wounded soldiers, it's a remarkable story. But it's one with a downside. That downside comes in the form of a tiny microbe with a powerful punch. Here's the culprit. It's a bacterium called Bamanii, referred to in Iraq as Iraqibacter. It's named for microbiologist Paul Bauman, who researched it back in 1968. But even he couldn't predict what this tiny single-celled organism would one day become. Like most bacteria, it lives in colonies and is constantly reproducing, simply by dividing and dividing again. A single bacterium can give rise to five billion trillion in only a day. This bug used to be relatively harmless, yet somehow it's found a way to transform itself into a drug-resistant killer. One of its many victims was ABC News correspondent Bob Woodruff. On January 29th, 2006, while embedded with the U.S. 4th Infantry Division in Baghdad, his vehicle was hit by a roadside bomb. We have some breaking news to report. Our co-anchor of World News Tonight, Bob Woodruff, and his... To keep him alive, doctors had to remove part of his skull and induce a medical coma. Miraculously, Bob was stabilized and evacuated to Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland. His wife, Lee, was there by his side. What was going on with Bob at that point? He underwent many different surgeries for different things, but I think that's the point at which they became nervous about pneumonia and, and sepsis setting in. And in fact, that was what had happened. A Baumannia infection had spread throughout his body, and he was back at death's door. It seemed impossible to me that someone could be in a war and be hit by a bomb and survive this and then be actually felled by a simple bacteria in a hospital. Bob Woodruff is just one of many soldiers and civilians picking up this deadly microbe in hospitals along the evacuation chain out of Iraq and bringing it back home to America, where it's infecting even people who have never seen a battlefield. It has this ability to hang around in places where it ought not, like on doorknobs and pillowcases and, and the like. Where it can survive for weeks, so why not simply use an antibiotic like penicillin to fight it? After all, haven't antibiotics been the magic bullet saving soldiers' lives since World War II? We saved a lot of people's lives. Penicillin was a wonder drug. But something has changed. Now the bugs are fighting back. Microbiologist Mike Smith demonstrates how drug resistant this bug has become. You take Baumannii and you put it on a plate containing imipenum. He places colonies containing millions of bacteria in several petri dishes and confronts them with imipenem, an antibiotic so strong it's nicknamed gorillacillin. After 12 hours, all the bacteria should be dead, but they're not. Unfortunately, this is the kind of thing that we're seeing where uh, certain colonies are surviving, and, and in this case, you can see a few in the middle there. Now, looking at it, there's only six or eight little colonies. These are the only ones that are living, so the entire population now of remaining bacteria are imipenum resistant. So this is the strain. Smith and graduate student Tara Janoulis prepare a sample of Baumannii. 
Its DNA will be sequenced one letter at a time. The results reveal that Baumannii has large sections of genes that don't belong, foreign genes that are giving it resistance to antibiotics. There is a multi-drug resistance strain that took 45 different drug resistance genes and stuck them in one spot. This should be alarming because that's what this bug can do. How is this possible? There's only one way we get our genes, and that's from our parents. It's called vertical gene transfer. But it turns out bacteria can also get genes in a process called horizontal gene transfer. One way that happens is when two bacteria get together for a little friendly conjugation, the microbial form of snuggling. They form a connection and squirt DNA into each other. Turns out, Baumannii has been getting a little too friendly. Could that be what's making it so nasty? To find out, Mike Smith zaps a colony of Baumannii with electricity, creating over a thousand mutant bugs, each one different, each one missing one known gene. He takes these mutant microbes and feeds them to some microscopic worms. They're an amazing little organism. For Mike, one of the best things about these worms is that they love eating bacteria. That's what it eats for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it turns out that when these worms eat disease-causing bacteria, it often kills them too. Just like lethal bacteria can kill us. But if Mike has succeeded in zapping out the lethal genes, then some of his worms should survive. Will it work? He'll find out at dinner time. The worms that survive give Mike the information that he needs to know who Baumannii has been getting friendly with. It turns out one of the deadly genes comes from a well-known killer, the bacteria responsible for Legionnaire's disease. A deadly bug first recognized back in 1976, when, at an American Legion convention, over a thousand people suddenly came down with a serious lung infection. 34 died. It's taking in drug resistance gene and it's developing drug resistance. It's taking in virulence or disease-causing type genes and it's using them. With the addition of some new genes, Baumannii becomes more lethal and harder to defeat all at the same time. It's an ongoing battle, not easily won. Perhaps instead of trying to just overwhelm them and kill them, maybe we can coerce them into doing something that they weren't thinking about doing if we understand how they communicate. But bacteria have been around a lot longer than we have, and they are very good at adapting to anything that we throw at them. So for now, it's a matter of early intervention, better hospital hygiene, and good medical care. That's what saved Bob Woodruff. He's had, I think, a miraculous recovery. It's pretty phenomenal. It speaks to the acute medical care that he got in the beginning as well.